welcome to this video about using CodeApp to graph your data for the P1.1 uh, assessment, but also for other purposes. So if we Google CODAP, CodeApp, uh, it will bring us to this page from where we're going to press the Launch CodeApp button. And this brings up the CodeApp, CodeApp graphing, gra there, graphing package. Uh, we want to create a new document at this point. If you've already saved documents, you can open them if you have um, some saved. So we're going to create a new document. And we can see here we can add a title to our document if we are likely to save it. So in this case, um, we're going to be looking at the conductivity versus uh, salt data table. Now, so we start by bringing a table of data in here, well, making a table of data. We have this set of um, functions across the top here. We're going to use two of them particularly. So we start with our table of data. Now, <clears throat> we'll give it a title, same thing we had before, conductivity. versus salt. Okay, um, it talks about here attribute name. So an attribute is like one of your variables. So that's what attribute means. So we're going to have two columns. We're going to press this plus button in a moment, but let's name the first attribute. This is going to be the first column. So let's rename it uh, amount of salt. And as we name our attributes, one of the important things is that if we put uh, something in brackets after the we put some text, which is the name of it, and then we want the unit of it in brackets after. So here we've got amount of salt, and it's measured in grams, which is little g. And CodeApp, if we hover, you notice that CodeApp actually, um, well, once we press return, I should say, uh, when we hover, CodeApp will show it as that amount of salt in grams. So it knows that that is the unit. Now, if you mess that up for some reason, um, you can still come here and if you edit the attribute properties, you can see that it's decided that we've got the name of it and then we've got the amount, or we've got the unit down here. If we've mucked something up um, by putting some text into one of these boxes down here, it might decide that the, the uh, data is actually text and you might need to come here to change the data to numeric. It's normally pretty good at picking up exactly what you want as long as you don't put text in these uh, in, in the actual data boxes for the table, it will usually assume it's numeric. Um, but if it, for some reason, has defaulted to assuming that it's not numeric because you've accidentally entered some text, you might need to come here and say that it's numeric. You can also change the precision. That's how many decimal points it will use in your data. So if your data happens to be very small, you might need to increase the number of decimal points. Um, okay, and then press apply to, to keep that. Right. Uh, so we've got our first column heading. We want a second column, so we come to this plus here, which says add a new attribute to this table. So we're going to add a new attribute. Now it's added; it's just off the screen a little bit. We've got to expand our table. Maybe it hasn't added it. Press plus, probably. I oh, just messed up. Here we go. So um, yeah, let's now to adjust the size of this column, we need to seemingly use this corner. This corner expands your table, and you can use the usual. Select between box uh, between columns here to adjust the size of the column. Right, let's just call this one new etch again. So let's rename this one conductivity and con. I've done it again. I was mistyped conductivity, and it is in amps per volt is the unit. And now we're in a position we can start entering our values. You notice at the moment it's only got one row. That's fine. It will add more rows as we go. So we select in the box where we want to add it. Might need to double click in the box by the looks of that. Um, and you can just tab between the boxes. When you press enter, it will add a new row. So we can start off by entering our first column if we want. Okay, and then we can click over here into this box and enter our values. Now I've created these data values more or less the same as in the table, but I have uh, that that you had. But what I've done is take the outliers and provide alternative data for the outliers. So mine is not going to be as perfect a graph as was in the original set of data that you've graphed by hand, which I think is more realistic to what you're likely to get in in a lot of the experiments we would do in physics. Okay, so here's my table of data. It looks good. I've got 
uh, numbers only in these columns. I've got the unit expressed in brackets in my column heading. Now, now we're in a position to produce the graph. The graph is super easy in CodeApp. This is what I like about it. So we press the graph button and it gives us this default graph style. Uh, at the moment, there is no attribute uh, on either of these. And so we just, oh, I've misspelled conductivity again. Con Conductivity. There we go. Um, so uh, we can really simply, we're going to make this even bigger, okay, because we've got all this space on our screen. So let's make it bigger. And we're going to drag and drop to build our graph. So we drag an attribute onto an axis. Now your independent variable should usually go on the horizontal axis. And our dependent variable should usually go on the vertical axis. If we've got that sorted, then this is all good. Um, if we messed it up, it's really easy uh, to change it. Um, we can, well, obviously it was so quick to produce the graph that we can always change that just by building another graph. And I think that's what you would do. Uh, there might be a way to reverse the axis, I can't remember. I've got a feeling there is, but I'm not sure how that works. Now, the, the second thing we want to do is make sure we've got a graph where we can see all our five points, which we can, but that has the scales appropriate. Now, it will automatically produce a linear scale, assuming you've got these as numeric, um, which it has assumed. You can sort of tell that they're, that they're numeric because they're um, because the scale is, is nice and consistent across. If you found down here that these numbers were like 10, 22, 30 in the even spacing, then that wouldn't be, it would be showing that it's not using a numeric, it's not treating your data as numeric. Now, we can change the uh, lower axis boundary, which is the lower value on the axis, and the upper axis boundary just by moving our cursor there and then dragging it around. So if we want to change the upper point, we can bring that down to get more value at the top. Um, it will default to having all of your values on the screen, but if we want to get the zero point on this graph, we might need to move this up. Okay, and now we can see that the zero is now on the screen. Right? We can do the same thing on the horizontal. We can adjust these to make it look kind of good. And there we go, we've got our graph. Um, so yeah, so you can do that. You can also, if you really want to change the uh, scale, you instead of selecting close to one end of the axis, which allows us to move the upper and lower bounds, we can select in the middle and we can change the scale. Uh, let's see what it's doing. No, it's just moving the, it's moving the position at the moment. Hang on. Right, to translate the scale. So it's, it's basically moving the position of the graph up and down. Uh, so we don't want to do that either. Right now, the next thing we have we want to do is put a is, is make it just a modification to the visual appearance. At the moment, this is plotting with large round circles, and I really don't want to plot with large round circles. I would prefer them to be black, and secondly, I want them to be a lot smaller. Now I can't make them crosses, which is non-ideal, but it's okay because they're going to it's plotted the points accurately because it's a computer. If you accidentally Dently do what I just did and lose the toolbar here, just click on the top of the graph and it will come back. Okay. Um, what we do want to do now, we've got our small black circles and our points all plotted and our scales sorted out, is uh, select the ruler here and this will allow us to add a line. Now we've got two options for a line. We can use a movable line or the least squares line. The least squares line, let's just select it. This is the computer generating for you the best line of best fit uh, it can come up with. It uses um, something called least squares regression, and this value of R squared down here tells you how accurate that line is compared to your set of points. And so that's what the computer thinks the best line of best fit is. This is a really good way for checking whether you get it right. Um, but what I would do is let's play with the movable line idea first because I think it's a it's a more useful way for you to see whether you understand what's what you're trying to do with the line of best fit. So let's hit movable line and it's produced us a line on here that we can change and it also tells us the um, equation for the line. So let's just put the equation, drag and drop it down here out of the way 
And then let's use this line. Now we can, if we select the, you see it's got four squares on it. Two of them are set up around the idea that you can change the slope of the line. Okay, we can change the slope. Uh, the other one is that we can change the position of the line. So we can move the line around on the graph and get it in the right spot. So the first thing I would aim to do is get the slope of the line about right using these ones to your points. So don't worry too much about where it is, just look at the, the run of those points and say let's get that slope about right. And now we move the position of the line until it's among the points. So there's about an even number of points above and below the line and the spread of those points, their aboveness and their belowness. So we've got a point above the line over here at, towards one end at a point above the line over here towards the other end. We've got a point below the line here at one end and a point below the line here at the other end and we've got a line pretty close to the middle. So we've got a nice spread of points above and below the line and the slope looks like a pretty accurate reflection of it. And here is the equation for that line. As I move the line around, the equation changes. So this is great, right, because it's already done the equation for you as well as um, getting the line. And that's, that's legit, right? You don't have to show your, like using a computer to calculate the gradient, to, to, to give you the gradient, is a legitimate way for um, this assessment of securing the gradient and the equation. Now let's just have a look at this equation a bit more. Um, so I'll hover over, uh, it's sort of going dim on me. Um, it says conductivity equals 0 0.477 A slash V slash G times the amount of salt. And then it sort of looks like it says minus 10.3. In fact, that says plus 10.3, but it's the font it uses is really difficult to read. Now I'm just going to show you why. Here's the zero, here's the uh, y-axis uh, intercept for this graph and you can see that it's about at 10.3 and it's at a positive value. So if you think of y, the uh, in this case conductivity equals m, the gradient, 0 0.477 times the amount of salt, the x-axis variable, and then it should be plus the y-intercept, so it should be plus 10.3. And in fact, I'll show you that it is plus 10.3 because if I move this line down momentarily so that the y-intercept is below zero, you can see that it's changed to something that's much more obviously a minus sign. Uh, it's got a very narrow, skinny minus sign. When I go up here, it's turned into what I think is a more bolded symbol that's actually you know, just as a plus symbol, but the font they've chosen to use is really hard to read. So please, please, please think very carefully about the plus or minus. It's not a minus symbol, it's a plus symbol there. It's just my eyes at least find that incredibly hard to spot. So uh, there's, our, there's, our, there's our line of best fit and our equation. And, and what I want you to do in your document is to retype that equation. Conductivity equals 0 0.477 or whatever gradient you've got for your preferred line of best fit that you've put on, leave this unit out. Leave out the amps per volt per gram, because for now at least I don't think we need to worry about that. And then <clears throat> times the amount of salt. So conductivity equals 0 0.477 times the amount of salt minus 10.6. And I think you want to then say where conductivity is measured in amps per volt and the amount of salt is measured in grams. Okay, so finish off with this is my equation and this is what my um, amounts are measured in. If you've used symbols as the column headings, uh, so you get conductivity uh, C equals, um, so C equals 0 0.477 times M minus 10.6, then your statement of the equation could be conductivity equals 0 0.477 times m minus 10.6 where conductive where c is the sorry c equals 0 0.477 m plus 10.6 where c is conductivity in amps per volt and m is the amount of salt in grams that would be a statement a good statement to include with any equation to explain what the terms in the equation mean. Right, so here's our graph, and we've got our equation, and it's now looking really good. Um, 
And as I say, we can check against the least squared line. We can actually put both on here at once to see. And we see that my, my line came out pretty close to the least squared line. Very similar intercept, very similar gradient. So we can turn the least squared line off now, having checked that. Um, and then we've got, how do we use this graph in our uh, report? Well, we go here to the camera and we choose export and we can save the file and it will save it to our Google Drive, which is great. Or we can save it to our computer and upload it. It will come out as a image file, which means that you can select insert image in uh, your Google Doc, or you can upload it to Classroom, whatever you want to do. Or you can print it and literally, you know, uh, paste it into a paper copy of your of your assessment. Okay. Um, hopefully that is sufficient for you to use Kodap. I've been through some of the key issues that can arise already. Uh, the main one that I would worry about is that if you accidentally put you know, 10G, 20G here, for example, it will start treating these not as numbers and it will start treating this column as labels. And that means that the scale along the bottom may not be linear and you may not have the availability of these lines of fit because it's not, it w won't believe in this as being uh, data that you can produce lines of best fit for. So that's the way, to, the way to fix that, is to go here, uh, firstly remove any text from the, um, from the values, and then go here and edit the attribute properties and check that the type is selected as numeric. Okay, so that's actually, once you get the habit of it, it's really quick to use. It should take you five or ten minutes to produce a table of data and a graph. Um, and then, oh, the second big trap, of course, was the equation. That, that there says plus, it's just a bit hard to read the plus sign. So yeah, keep that in mind too, and you should be in really good shape. Thank you for your time in watching this video.